I'm going to take you through the process of valuing a company using a discounted cash flow model. And this model I created myself. And the company we're going to look at is Capri Holdings. And Capri sells designer clothing through brands like Versace. So let's get started with the model. The first thing we need is market cap, which is $2.3 billion. And that's the value of the company according to the stock market. Next, we need the stock price, which is $15.55. Now we can figure out the shares outstanding because it's the market cap, $2.3 billion, divided by stock price, $15.55, equals shares outstanding, $148 million. Next for the model, we need the free cash flows. And this is how you value a business. You estimate the future free cash flows then you discount that number back to today's dollar amount and then you have a value for the entire company then you divide that number by the shares outstanding and you get the intrinsic stock price and you compare it to the actual stock price to see if it's a buy or a sell now I'm putting in the net income which is a profit and loss from the income statement and you also want to look at the financial ratios of the company and we're going to do that at the end of this video and last, I put in the revenue. You also want to take a look at the numbers. And I like to make sure the numbers are pretty consistent and there's no big negatives. Because if one of those two things happen, we probably can't use a discounted cash flow model because a DCF model relies heavily on the inputs. And the numbers look pretty good. Also, I can see their revenue has increased every year for the past four years. So that's a good sign as an investor. Now let's get their capital structure. And I know they pay $55 million of interest on their debt. It's not in Yahoo Finance, so I had to look at other sources. But let's get their debt. We'll go to the balance sheet, and then we'll get their current debt of $630 million, and that's debt due within 12 months. And let's get their long-term debt of $1.9 billion. That's debt due after 12 months and they pay only 2.1% interest on the debt. Since interest is tax deductible, let's get their effective tax rate. Their income before tax is 621 million, and their income tax is 79 million. So the cost of debt is 1.9%. And let's get their cost of equity. Let's get the beta for that. That's the volatility of stock. And it's 1.87, so the, it's a little volatile. It moves almost twice as much as the market moves. You generally want a stock that's not too volatile. Let's get some more information from the balance sheet. We'll get their current assets. And these are assets that can be liquidated into cash within 12 months. And it usually involves cash, accounts receivables, and inventory. Fixed assets usually take longer than 12 months to turn into cash, so they're not called current. Let's get current liabilities, and these are debts and payables that are due within 12 months, and that's $1.5 billion. And last, their equity, that's the value of the company according to the balance sheet. That's total assets minus total liabilities, and that's $2.4 billion. Let's pull their EBIT, their earnings before interest and taxes, or operating income. And that's how much money the company made through operating their regular business, $880 million. Now we can see they have 51% of debt in the capital structure, 49% of equity, and the cost of debt is 1.9%, the cost of equity is 16.7%. And when you blend those two numbers together, you get a weighted average cost of capital of 9%. And that's what we're going to use to discount the future cash flows. So we estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also did a terminal value, which is all years past year four. We discounted those numbers back to today using the WAC. And when we sum the numbers, we get a value of the company of $7.2 billion. And when we divide that by 148 million shares, we get an intrinsic stock price of $49. So the actual stock price is $16. So it's trading at a 68% discount. So it's a buy according to the model. And it looks like it was trading above intrinsic value, well above intrinsic value. 
at one point, but it's dropped a lot, it seems like, the past couple of years. So it seems like a great buy if the company can continue growing. And that might be difficult because people are tightening their belts during coronavirus and not buying luxury clothing as much as before. Let's look at Simply Wall Street. Let's just see what they value the company at. They're a little lower. They're saying $36 a share. It's interesting to see what others value a company at. I have my own inputs and my own model. So I just rely on whatever the company's financials are and their capital structure and my model does all the magic. And sometimes I do tweak the model every now and then or I change it for certain deals, but I try to keep it fairly consistent. So let's look at their financial ratios. We'll get a little more information on the company. They have a great PE, 6.6. .6. The average in the entire market is 26 and the median is 16. That's price of stock over earnings per share. That indicates a really good buy. Price of sales, really good price of sales. That's price of stock over sales per share. This implies you have to invest 40 cents to receive $1 of sales. That seems like a really good deal to me. I have a price to book a 0.9. A PB under one indicates a really good value. Of course, you wanna look at the book. When I say book, I mean balance sheet to make sure the numbers look good. Let's look at Capri's balance sheet. So you can see they have a lot of intangible assets, 2.3 billion and 1.7 billion of goodwill. Those aren't the best assets. So if we pluck those out of assets and then we recalculated the price to book value, which is done right here, it comes out to about 20. So price to tangible book value is about 20. So, so always look at the tangible assets and other assets on the balance sheet to just see if the book is really good because under 0.1 sounds great but you just want to make sure the assets and liabilities are appropriate. They have a current ratio of 1.1 that's good their current assets are above their current liabilities they have an ROE of 14 percent that's a little lower than what I like I like to see above 20 percent interest coverage ratio of 16 that's great they could cover their interest payments 16 times Debt of 51%, that's a little high, but it's not terrible because they do have appropriate free cash flows to cover those payments. It seems like the price is undervalued based off of the current economic situation with coronavirus, people not spending too much money in designer handbags. But if you're willing to hold the stock for two, three plus years, you might get a nice return on this. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching.